Hi everyone, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome to the channel. What we're going to do in this lesson, as we said before, in the previous one, we're going to add the tags in right here. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to use the choices JS library to actually do it. All right, to make it easier for us with some Alpine JS. All right, so what we're going to do is we first thing we need to go to our browser. So let me open up my browser, as you can see right here. So if I refresh, probably this will show the tags now. The, this right here. So we're obviously going to add the tags in there. All right, so open a new tab and inside just type in choices.js. Just do that. All right, so then we will get this part right here. So what you want to do is you just, you see the get up, just click on this. Okay, so once it's opened, let me make it a bit bigger for you guys. You go down to the npm install choices.js. This is by far my favorite library. As when we use bootstrap, I use the select uh, JS. That worked very well for me. But in this one with Tailwind and Alpine JS, I, this, in my opinion, is the best choice. <laughs> the name choice as well. All right, let's just choose npm install choices.js. Then you go to your code editor and this one right here. And I'm just going to open up my terminal and then I'm just going to do npm install choices.js. All right, so while that is busy installing, I think it will not take too long. Uh, Windows is busy with its updates and stuff, so it takes a little bit longer. Right, so next part that you want to do is, let me just close this. So what you want to do now is you want to go to your public, all right, public folder right there. Then you're going to CSS and just create a new file and call this choices, choices.css. All right, so now we've got our choices.css right there. Now we want to link this file in our resources, views, layouts, all right, and in our guest layout right here. So we go to our partials head, if you guys remember that. Okay, so what we want to do, you see now we here we bring in our app.js and I'm just going to copy this one down and just underneath that one, I'm just going to include choices.css. So the file that we just created, we're linking it here. All right, so this choices right here, we're just linking it in our head section right there. But remember, just link it above your app.css. Okay, the next part that we want to do is we actually want to put in obviously CSS properties in here. In order to do that, let's go back to our browser. This one right here, and you see the CDN right here. Just click on it. Just if you click on it, all right, then it will open this up for you. Then the next part, you go to public, and then you go to assets. Then you go to styles, click on the styles, and you will see this little file here, public asset styles choices, all right? Now the reason for this is if you want to style your buttons to look the way you want them to look, then you can just come in and then you can obviously edit them. All right, so what we want to do, just copy everything inside that and go back to Visual Studio Code and just paste them in here. All right, so now that is pasted in here, okay. Now you can obviously modify the look and feel of the buttons, but we will get to that. I'm just going to leave mine as is, but I'm doing it this way so that you guys can do it when you want to, okay. So if you want to modify them, update them and stuff like that, okay. So the next part that I'm going to do now is we need to update our JavaScript. So let me just minimize. So we go to resources, JS, app.js, right here. All right, resources, JS, app.js. Now what we want to do now is we want to import, let me just make sure, open up a terminal, 
as you can see, it already installed it right here. So make sure that this is finished before you do that. Okay, so we can see it's done. So we're just going to import. Okay. Uh, let me just do this. Choices. Let me just do this. Import choices. Come on. Choices from. Okay. As you can see, it already do it like this. Now, if you a bit new all right if this is grayed out for you it just means that it's not being used in your file right here okay so what we want to do now is we want to actually make use of it okay so let me just make a comment here create multi select is it one word multi it's a multi select element Okay. I don't know if it's one word or each one word. So let me just do this. Okay. So what we want to do, just a comment to say that we want to create a multi-select element. Now the next part that we want to do is we want to do window.choices. Okay, so window choices. All right, and we want to equal that to an arrow function. All right, and the arrow function, we want to put the element in there. Okay. And then we want to, this is just the ES5, ES6 syntax for modern JavaScript. All right, and inside that, we just want to return a new choices. The, okay, we just want to return new choices. element we want to equal that to uh, open and square brackets and we just want to close it off right there and what we want to do is we want to do a max item count it's not supposed to be an array this is supposed to be curly brackets so max item count that yeah you can put whatever you want to do now let's say you want people only to have two tags then you put in two here okay so if you want them to have three or four tags you put three or four in my case i only want them to do three tags so let's just keep it to three because otherwise if they choose 10 tags you just think the top part of your post is just tags all over the place and that doesn't look very nice so we just limit it to three okay the next remove item button we just want to set this to true so if the per if you want the person to actually let's say they want to delete the tag that they just selected this is basically you just setting it to true that's it right so we're done with our javascript now the next part that we want to do is actually now we want to run npm run dev so we compile out this choice of javascript to be part of our app.js javascript so basically what it does it compiles this into our public js.app.js okay so let's do that all right so what i want to do i just want to clear this and then i'm just going to do npm run dev okay and then press enter you can see all done right so let's just close it off now the next part that we want to do is now this is done so we know our javascript is part of our our choices is part of our javascript now now app.js we want to actually just link it in here so we're going to do the label instead of tag uh, categories we just want to put tags now we just want to put in let me just put it at the end here uh, multiple Okay, and the name is just going to be tags with an array because we're going to have multiple tags. And the ID, I'm just going to do tags here yeah, as well. The value tags, all right? Well, this just comes from this, just copy down your category. That's all you do, just copy down the category part, and then you just fill in the details. Okay, multiple, I think I misspelled it there. Right, so after we've done the multiple, let's just see how everything looks like in the browser. 
All right, so this is how it looks like. What we want to do now is we want to use the choices library to actually handle all of this for us. All right, so let's go back. All right, what we do is the select category, we can delete that. Now, what we want to do, we want to use some Alpine JS properties. All right, so X data, we want to equal that to basically open and closing curly braces, and then X init initialize basically we want to initialize a function that calls on is basically calling on the choices library for us so we're just going to do choices and we're just going to add a dollar sign the element right let me just give some spaces so it's easier to see let me just do this so that you guys can easily see it All right so we X data is just set it to an empty array. You can actually just put this in front, actually right there, because there's actually a better convention. Let's copy this after the ID. Just put it in there. All right. So then all the classes at the bottom right there. You can do it however you want, whatever is easier for you to read and for someone else to read your things as well. All right. So we just set a data to an empty open and close the brackets. There we got X init. The function right there and then we got our multiple right there now instead of the categories right here we actually want the tags you guys remember the tags we're getting from our controller right here this tags right here is the ones that we want to right here okay so we just bring in our tags and then for the tag and then we're just going to put in the tag name and the tag id just remember this right now all right we are calling on the tags method inside the model itself so let's go to the tag model quickly as you see right here we're calling on the methods but we don't haven't created those methods yet so let's just quickly create them public function this one is going to be for the id All right and this is going to be a string okay and then we just basically just going to return the property this command id so basically we return the property okay the next thing that we're doing is we obviously just want to do the name as well name and the slug next one is the slug so you can just do this just copy this down and just slug like that All right so returning this the reason why i'm saying this is handy Let's say all your views use kind of this property, but let's say next time you want to update that property and modify it or anything like that, you can just do it in your model and it will be automatically updated in all the views. Okay, so instead of having to update them in the views individually, right? Just makes the work a lot easier. All right, so now we have that set up. So let's go basic list needs to be tags, otherwise, it's not going to give us an error. All right, so we got our tags right there and tags here. Okay. All right, so if we refresh our browser, this is supposed to be, as you can see, now we can actually select. As you can see, only three values can be added. All right now, obviously, what you want to do now is you, if you want to change the styling of this, you can do that inside the choices.css. All right, then you can do the styling. The remove item button is this basically that we have done right there. All right. So that's it for this lesson, guys. If you like it, please give it a like. In the next one, we're going to be able to make this form a little bit functional and stuff like So if you create it, you can actually go to the store method. But before we get that, I want to a little bit explain this right here to you guys. Okay. There's benefits and not benefits of having a WYSIWYG editor that's publicly Let's say if an admin user, but we're going to get that. I'm actually going to get ahead of myself right here. So I'm just going to stop myself right there. All right. If you like the video, guys, please give it a like. If you don't, please, obviously, a dislike. I'm going to link the this right here, this choices, in the description so that you guys can easily get it. And obviously, this right here, I'm going to link in the description and the link to the choices library to the GitHub file as well this one 
So if we click on here, I will link this also in the description so you guys don't have to go and search for it, okay, to easily find it. Thank you guys for watching. If you like it, like I said, like, dislike, negative or positive feedback, appreciate it. Thank you guys and see you in the next one. Goodbye.